Great to be back, George. Now, the task this evening, similar to last night's, we've basically asked you to come up with a turnaround strategy for a global business that's struggling because we want to take you out of your comfort zone and test your business knowledge and your strategic thinking. Last night, it was Thomas Cook, the ailing European travel agent company. Tonight, it's the New York Times. So here's your task. We want you to come up with a turnaround strategy. You've had 48 hours to come up with this strategy. You're on the shortlist to become the new chief executive and you've got a meeting with the board of directors, our judges, to convince them that you're the right person for the job. So, the New York Times. The stock, the New York Times company, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, down 20% last year, 60% over the past five years. Just last month, the New York Times company ousted long-serving chief executive Janet Robinson. Now, the company is still profitable but only just, and revenue has fallen sharply in recent years as the newspaper industry comes to terms with the challenges of the internet. The question is, what would you do to turn around the company? The first question then to our judge this evening, Edward Roderick, co-chairman of Investors. Good evening to you, Mohammed. What do you think are the fundamental issues for this business in its current market? Mm-hmm. Uh, given that the uh, the whole world is moving towards a more tech-savvy uh, audience, and uh, especially for the newspaper industry, we're seeing people on the move constantly, especially for an area like New York. Uh, what's happening is there's a, there's a different way of approaching news and receiving news. There's a more customized manner, a more on-demand manner, and we're seeing this trend moving more digital. And uh, as this is happening, uh, advertisers are also becoming uh, a lot more conscious of the market, so they're looking at uh, advertising specifically and reaching out to specific target audiences and they can do that through a well-informed uh, breakdown if the newspaper company has that. So by moving over to digital, uh, a lot of this can be done, uh, although there still remains a very uh, strong element of advertising through print, but uh, over the next few years, uh, I, I reckon that this would uh, probably decline and as people move more towards the digital area. So there's been uh, overall in the newspaper industry uh, a decline in advertising sales as well as in subscription sales or stagnant growth because the fact that most people are looking for their news online and, their, and advertising is also moving online to reach more specific target groups. Nasser Al-Madani, your first question about the New York Times scenario. Yeah, Mohammed, uh, I just got to feel that you're saying that the New York Times should cease printing and move gradually towards the, 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 the online newspaper. Uh, but how would you do that? And what's the time frame you're, you're talking about? Okay, so basically the way we're looking at it is that you don't. We understand that you know uh, the the sales are declining, and in order to go forward, we need to make sure we understand our readership. And to understand the readership, we need to make sure we have enough data. So, my uh, my approach would be very uh, gradual, like you mentioned. Um, and the the problem here is that we've already taken a very long uh, time for New York, New York Times has taken a long time to get on to the online market. Uh, you know, with launching uh, launching a, an iPad. Uh, application in 2010, which is quite delayed, but the move, the trend is moving faster. So in order to catch up to it, uh, you know, you have uh, a lot more competition in the online realm. So, uh, you know, the, the amount of revenue you can generate per ad may be much less than the amount that would have been uh, generated through print media. But since the shift is happening and since competition is there, you need to ride this wave quickly. And the way you can do this is through having a task force. Uh, and this task force would have to understand your readership. And by understanding your readership, you can target two segments of your revenue streams. One segment being your subscription, and you can make sure that you have a more customized, more user-friendly platform that's appealable or that's appealing to our uh, subscribers. And on the other hand, you can have also uh, the advertising element of it be more specific and more focused because the data you will collect from your subscribers as they go online, uh, it would create uh, a better uh, premium advertising for our customers. Therefore, they would rather advertise with us than uh, everyone else. But what w- you know, what I would do is I would uh, I would really need this task force to go out and look at this. And the way you could do this better is currently what we're doing is we're looking at 20 free articles a month. I believe we can capture the same audience for 10 free articles a month and in- and boost our revenue streams in the short term. Edward Roderick, if you look at uh, the industry overall, what has been the performance of? other companies share prices in the same segment and what has been the different approach that the other media groups have taken to this issue? 
Mm-hmm. As far as my knowledge goes, it's been uh, over, over across the board. It's been you know declining uh, in terms of the the field that they've had uh, in terms of uh, advertising sales uh, and subscriptions have been stagnant. There's been across the board uh, share prices. I'm, I'm I don't have the exact details, so I'm not going to talk about that. But I know that if overall the trend has been that there's been less uh, of a perception. The perception has been that there's less confidence in prints alone, and there's uh, stagnant growth. There's only so much you can do. So on the secondary side of the question, how have the likes of the Murdoch group and whatever approached this whole issue? Mm -hmm. So Rupert Murdoch uh, did something for Times of uh, UK and he started charging for every issue. His argument was that if people are going to pay for my uh, print, they'd also pay for uh, the online version and it's been working out for them. Uh, Whereas that was a fear for New York Times because uh, there was a fear of loss of certain advertising clients and therefore uh, opened up the 10 to 20 free articles. Uh, And I think they should maintain this approach, uh, but uh, but I definitely agree with uh, Rupert Murdoch that there should be subscriptions. Subscriptions may need to be a little bit more flexible. I think that's the issue here. People don't we don't understand our readership and we don't understand our uh, what our advertising customers really want. And by having uh, you know by gathering more information through a task force, we'll be able to target these two very specifically and create that competitive advantage. NASA. Well, uh, one area I would like to ask you about that New York Times acquired some companies like About.com. What your plan is to do about those things? Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, in terms of a long-term strategy, I think it's very important that uh, New York Times focuses on what they do best, and that I think is quality news. Uh, Over the past few years, there was a lot of acquisitions that kind of, um, you know, diversified uh, its focus. And uh, what happened was we went into About.com, Boston.com, a few others, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of competition from Yahoo, from uh, Google that, uh, you know, outdid uh, these assets. I think um, the best thing to do would be to look through, to evaluate these assets, see which ones are core and which ones focus on quality news. Keep those, uh, try to consolidate and find the synergies between them so that they can work together uh, and m- probably uh, over the long run look at a way to liquidate the assets that we think are not core, uh, that are kind of diversifying. Uh, because these are costs you know, there's uh, on our income statement that we are bearing uh, on an annual basis. So I think uh, over the long run, yes, that needs to be done. So it's not just a revenue game. You have to look at your revenue and you have to look at where your costs are coming from and you have to evaluate your assets to see if they're really... What you want to stick to is this really our core focus, and um, I really think um, New York Times currently has a good subscriber base uh, in terms of their quality news, and they have a, a very loyal subscriber base. It's about eight hundred thousand subscribers to print alone, let alone the uh, the uh, media, uh, the um, digital media. Um, but you know this has to all be done uh, very carefully because forty percent of our uh, employees are labor unions from labor unions, so uh, union workers you know need to be managed uh, carefully. So I think that can also be done. Um, through uh, a good strategy and you know through managing expectations not only of the internal employees and the, uh, the customers but also expectations of the shareholders. Listen, we're running short on time on this task. One quick question to each of our judges, uh, Nasser Al Madani. Uh, can you give me a little bit more details on what you do with the cost people cost? Uh, you said they, they you're saying that they will be laid off or something. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the thing is, if, if you're going to, it depends if, first you have to identify, right, if there's really a need for you to lay off, are there, are there redundant workers, are you going to maintain all these assets? If you're going to liquidate and you're going to sell off a company, then the, you know, the, they wouldn't lose their jobs and it, w- it wouldn't be an issue with uh, with your company. But if it was the case that you did have redundant workers, I think it, you would have to be very transparent with uh, with the your team internally and you should, you know, you should try to find synergies and try to make it clear to your employees as well as your shareholders that this is the direction you want to go to. That what happens? I'm, I'm going to stop you there, man. We're in very short of time on this task. Final question to Edward. How much of this issue do you think has been the downturn in advertising revenue because of the recession, and how much is about a fundamental shift in the way people? go to newspapers definitely uh, the the economic situation is a big thing uh, and you know advertising uh, revenues are directly correlated with the economic situation uh, the better companies are doing the more they're advertising the more they're spending on advertising so I think that's a major chunk uh, I would assume uh, at least 60% of that comes from the economic uh, ec- the economic situation and then uh, it's also mentioned as a risk factor in in our uh, annual report so it definitely is a big 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 chunk but Ma- people Mohammed- Cousin, we'll have to stop you there. Thank you very much indeed. (laughs) 
So thanks for your analysis of the New York Times company, the challenges it's facing and Uh, some of the possible solutions. Let's talk a bit more about your own company now here in the UAE, Mohammed, a link personal assistant. Going to spend a couple of minutes just so you can refresh our memory about the the kind of company it is. Uh, First of all, a link personal assistant, tell us in 30 seconds, what do you do? We're currently a personal assistant service, so we provide personal assistant services and aid and help for your personal life. So we run your errands, we do your tasks, things that you don't think you necessarily need to spend time doing. So we create more value for you so you can use your time uh, and in the way you use it best, either being more productive at work or spending time with your family. So really we are just a helping hand and we can take care of any tasks you have. Now I know I was going to ask you about revenue and profitability, but you're a very, very new company, effectively in soft launch. So I won't ask you about that. Instead, I'll ask you, how much are you going to charge for this service? How much do you think you can charge? Our, our basic service is currently going at about six ninety five dirhams, and uh, that's it, a monthly charge. It's a monthly charge, and it uh, enables the user to have about ten hours of personal assistant time, and uh, the time is measured uh, in real time of how m- how long the assistant actually spends on your task. And very quickly, what's your strategy for two thousand and twelve and beyond? Whether or not you win the big break, we're looking first of all to we, we've identified that we have issues in. Uh, f- in making the customer understand the concept. We understand that there's a need for this service, but uh, it's the understanding of the concept that's been a little bit challenging. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to tweak our branding a little bit in 2012 to make sure we reach out to the correct target audiences and to make sure they understand clearly what our offering is all about. Uh, I think some of these comments even came in as SMSs when we were on a few days earlier. Uh, and I think we want to address these issues uh, very well. We spend a lot of time perfecting the product, so we know that from an operational perspective and from an IT perspective, perspective we have the product right is just about making people understand this concept so i think that will be our focus in 2012 and also to reach out to people as much as possible through different media sources okay i'm going to give our uh, judges uh, a couple of questions on this first of all nasa al madani your questions uh, muhammad what i see in this business model uh, you don't have a focus on certain known products personalization is is, is a wide range of could be a thousand items thousand services now what are you doing? Are you focusing on certain products that you're going to sell? Mm-hmm. And and again, this has been the same issue that we've had in in order to uh, you know make our clients understand the business concept. And I think uh, I think the way I can address this question is to tell you that what we do really is what your personal assistant would do, something you can actually do. So that is our focus. We're not going to go out and actually we had a task where we needed to gift wrap a car. We're not going to go out and gift wrap a car. We're going to source it for you. So sourcing and doing office work is our core concept, our focus. Uh, so all the other tasks we will link people. Uh, we will link you to suppliers that will actually do that job. So our core focus really is providing that aid, that assistance, and uh, basically as an office assistant. So I don't know if that, that clarifies exactly. Uh, what well, from the brief, I know that you also provide drivers driving which is not part of a personal assistant in the office. Correct. I mean, the driver, uh, basically a personal assistant and a driver attached to it, the driver would be the hands and legs of the personal assistant. So if they need to go pick up a form, say you want a visa application form, they can go to the embassy, pick up a visa application form, drop it off to you. They can go pick up your laundry, take it to the laundry service. If there's a laundry service that actually does the pickup, then we out- obviously outsource it. Whatever is more convenient and more economic to the uh, to the client. We, we, keep, we are very client-centric. We may try to focus on the customer as much as possible. Edward, a couple of questions for you. On the base of the chargeability that you indicated there if you say that somebody works 40 hours a week for you and that you then ag- aggregate that up to a monthly charge you're going to be charging something around 10 and ten and a half thousand dirhams a month how do you pay somebody a salary pay for your overheads and make money out of that a very valid question and I think this is what we were doing we were focusing on mainly during our feasibility stage and what we did was we tried to uh, really uh, excel in creating one of the best uh, IT systems so we have a very sophisticated system right now that allows the cl- the PA or the personal assistant to actually d- uh, handle multiple clients so one personal assistant can handle up to 30 to 35 clients and, and actually you know be able to turn around uh, s- uh, sophisticated results quickly but if you're charging your clients on an on a uh, monthly basis on the basis of 10 hours work then how can you handle 35 clients 
It, yes, that's again a very, very valid question. Uh, because what happens is uh, most clients don't really use up their 10 hours. Uh, that's one thing. The second aspect of it is uh, it's all about management. See, our model is very expandable. As soon as the demand grows, we can expand and we're still uh, feasible. So we, we have a very sophisticated model that we've, we've studied every aspect of this element, uh, every element of this of this uh, project. And we, we understand the challenges that come with it, but it's all about managing it correctly. Uh, if you you know if you have the correct resources and you, you've allocated the right amount of time and you make sure you r minimize the, uh, the, uh, the task time through our, uh, you know, we have a database of suppliers and everything. Mohammed, we're out of time.